Hello everyone, welcome to pipeedge.com. For buried pipeline, soil erosion or soil movement can be problematic over the time. Often your buried pipeline will not have enough soil cover or it will be exposed to the atmosphere. The common mitigation to address this issue is to lower the pipeline so it has uh, sufficient cover. However, sometimes you may find this is, can be uh, challenging uh, because most likely those lines are either main gas transmission pipeline or crude oil pipeline for long distance and uh, it's going to cost a lot of money to shut the pipeline down and do the line lowering. Luckily, um, API has published a recommended practice to guide you to lower the pipeline while the pipeline is in service. Uh, at the beginning, I know a lot of pipeline engineers might feel this is very risky. Uh, you might f not feel comfortable uh, of lowering the pipeline while there is the pipeline is live. There's there's gas or crude oil or gasoline going through the pipeline. Uh, however, uh, all this uh, recommended practice is based on the, uh, the code, the maximum allowable longitudinal stress. So if we follow the uh, best practice, actually all those construction risks can be uh, addressed. Therefore, we have developed a new tool based on that API uh, 1117, uh, follow the calculation method to, to help you to make your design a lot easier. I know if you read the uh, document, uh, sometimes you will get lost in all those uh, calculations, equations, and uh, there's just no better way to you know, interpret the, um, uh, the allowable curve, how, how exactly you should plan to lower the pipe, how many steps, what's going to be the, the maximum unsupported span allowed. All those good stuff can be, um, can be, can be obtained from this tool fairly easily. Um, so. As always, uh, let's take a look at an example um, to show you step-by-step step how to use this great tool. Okay, let's take a look. Um, so let's say you have a 36-inch pipeline that is completely exposed to the air and all the soil cover has gone over the years. There's a big landline slide recently uh, happened in the region or severe erosion due to a uh, standard a thunderstorm. Now your power plant is exposed for 200 feet and uh, you're planning to lower in this pipeline without shutting down the line. So um, let's go to, uh, let's use Imperial uh, units to, um, to to show the example. Um, all the inputs at the beginning is fairly easy. It's the same as all our other tools. This is all the drop down manuals. Let's say you have 36 inch standard worth of this pipeline. And uh, the grade, this is a, um, a crude oil long distance pipeline, let's say is X52. And uh, the maximum operating pressure, let's say is uh, for class 600 uh, flange rating is 1440 PSI. And installation temperature, of course, a lot of times you will uh, realize that that um, the installation temperature is unknown. Basically, uh, nobody knows when we we should was the was the temperature when they installed the pipeline years or decades ago. So a lot of times, how we address this temperature, all it matters is delta T, and and this delta T eventually will be uh, represented by the thermal stress which is part of the, 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 the total longitudinal stress. We're just going to drive how, how, um, how should the rope uh, lower in the pipe. So a best you know, practice is so you just need to make sure is over 50 Fahrenheit delta T is the kind of like a rule of thumb. You can go more uh, conservative. So like in this case, let's say we assume uh, this pipeline was installed uh, at a cold weather, I say 40 Fahrenheit, and, uh, and the operating pressure is actually fairly high uh, at 120, or vice versa, because this will will change the drive of the um, 
the direction of the thermal stress. So let's say um, installation temperature 40, let's say operating temperature is 120, um, and uh, the desired vertical deflection. So this is based on how deep you want to go, uh, basically. So think about it, uh, your pipeline is 36 inch, and you need, let's say, minimal three foot cover uh, from the top of the pipeline to the grade. So 36 is roughly three feet, and you have to lower uh, six feet to achieve three feet of cover. So let's, in this case, let's say six feet. And uh, the design factor uh, is really, uh, this, is, this is, should be uh, for code compliance uh, purposes. Basically, this means uh, at the worst scenario, at the highest pressure, maximum delta T, your total longitudinal stress should be not exceed 90% of smiles. This is basically can be interpreted that way. Uh, I know some other codes like see if you work in Canada, sometimes you can say, um, or sorry, not Canada, you mean in other countries that you, you, you think is gonna should be 100%, you can change it to 0.9, but we, we strongly uh, recommend you keep 0.9 uh, if you're working in North America. And uh, Poisson ratio, this is all, Poisson ratios, a linear coefficient of thermal expansion, this is all typical value for steel pipe. Uh, so if your pipe is not a steel pipe, uh, or you want to use uh, slightly different parameters, all you need, need to do is to tick here, the box, and then you can manually override uh, the value. But for this example, I want to keep the same thing. I say, let's, let's change it. Sometimes you, you have see um, a different uh, modulus of elasticity. Uh, let's say I change it to, um, it was a three million uh, PSI. Um, this is, uh, sorry, 30 million. Um, I just do this for, for example purposes. And uh, longitudinal flexural stress due to existing elastic curvature. So this is exactly how it's called out in API 1117. Uh, the interpretation of this is either you might have the pipe is already roped or you have field bending, then you have to obtain or calculate the uh, remaining stress caused by roping or field bending in your lowering region and put in here because uh, if you don't consider that you rope the pipe, the pipe could be overstressed. But in this case, I say it's a straight, uh, straight pipe. There's no uh, flexural stress. Keep it zero, and um, the target horizontal length. So this is the total length of the section you want lowering from start to to the end. And I say I just said, you know, the total exposed the section is 200 feet. So you want to make sure that within the 200 feet, uh, your, your pipe is lowered. So, um, so let's change this to 200 because if you keep it zero, they will, um, the system or the calculation method will tell you the, um, the minimal span of the lowering section to make sure your pipe is not overstressed. But if you need to lower longer section, all it to do is to increase the horizontal section in between the two roping section, make sure you have enough cover. So in this case, we want to keep 200 feet um, uh, total horizontal section. Uh, you might find it out this might not be 200 um, from the, you know, it, the, the scale looks a little bit um, exaggerated uh, because you can see that it's almost seven, 720 in total length but your deflection um, is, is a few feet. So it's all because of the scale, but this is to show you how exactly you should rope this was the section of the roping for up upstream. Um, I think it's roughly 277 feet. Uh, you can move your uh, mouse along this whole alignment. They can tell you exactly the stationing, the, lower, the lowering uh, feet, um, so in this way, it's easier for you to interpret it and, pre and present it on the join. So after all this calculation, uh, this tool will generate this preferred trench profile uh, by itself. 
So what is driving this? How, how uh, what's the slope? How, you know, the distance you rope the pipe upstream and downstream is based on the stress. And the stress is interpreted in the result section. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, basically it's breaking out all the you know longitudinal stress to the internal pressure, thermal change, uh, uh, existing longitudinal stress, um, minimal trench length, which is without this horizontal section, was the minimal trench, uh, and um, and uh, also calculate what's allowable for bending. The bending eventually gonna drive the the roping section length. And uh, that way you can obtain this preferred trench profile. You can put it on a joint or simply provide it to your construction team. Uh, they have to strictly follow the trench profile to lower the pipeline, say, say safely. Of course, there's other factors uh, in the line lowering. If you read the uh, API 1117, you will find that uh, typically the lowering construction sequencing will not happen in one step. You know, you have multiple steps to lower the pipeline gradually. Uh, you want to avoid a very significant bending all in once. And uh, also when you're lowering the pipe, you need temporary su supports until the pipe is fully lower into the trench and uh, supported by the trench bottom. Um, so the last parameter result, as say, uh, showing here, maximum free span between supports. So this is um, for you to um, figure out how many temporary supports you, you need and what's the spacing. Of course, you can add some safety factors on top of that. So right now it's showing like, okay, the maximum unsupported span cannot be over 125.3. In this case, you can say 100 feet. Right. So in that way, you have a pretty um, a solid design for your line lowering. Of course, uh, when your design is done, your calculation is done, uh, you can click the report button to actually generate a pretty nice PDF report, like all our other tools. And in this case, I'm not going to put any information in. Uh, as you can see that you can generate this report with all your parameters, inputs, and the results and also the, the preferred trench profile. For those folks uh, working outside of the US and uh, we do offer a uh, mathematic system. Uh, so in that way, you can have all the parameters um, in mathematic units. Uh, it will make it easier to, uh, to use or present it to a team uh, in, in this case, once you, I just click here, so everything is converted to my metric by itself. You, you can do it the other way. You can even use metric system at the very beginning. Uh, but in that case, everything will be changed to uh, meters and uh, all, all KPA, all other um, my, my metric units. And if, if you use the metric units, when you generate a report, I'm going to just show you really quickly. Uh, in the report, it will show metric units as well. But one last thing I, I would like to mention, I know this uh, uh, API uh, 1117 is designed for movement of pipeline in service. However, sometimes you can't even use this tool to guide you to rope the pipe. And uh, it's really the calculation method, the theory behind it is is all the same. Is basically calculated based on your maximum design conditions. How much allowable pipe stress allowed for you to do the bending? Because when you rope the pipe, when you bend the pipe, when you lower the pipe, what's driving uh, the force or the additional stress is the bending stress. And uh, they will calculate how much bending stress available, and eventually they can determine how 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 sharp you can bend the pipe basically. So. This tool can also be used for roping design. Uh, of course, in it depends on the temporary or permanent. For for temporary setup, for example, in this case, uh, if it's a temporary, you want to rope the pipe. You want to figure out how how sharp you can bend. You can just uh, uh, simply change the MOP to zero, let's say, and uh, design temp temperature. You can you can put all the equivalents so you can manually. Uh, 
make sure the um, the thermal stress is zero. Well, just leave all other stuff. And this is a vertical deflection becomes how um, how much deflection you need for the, for the roping, and uh, in that way uh, you can put the target lens to zero if you want. Just um, select this. They can tell you to safely rope this pipe. What's kind of be um, the distance you need. I know sometimes when we talk about roping, uh, we interpret it as the bend radius, but I, I also feel this is a more straightforward way to for you to visually see, to deflect, let's say 1.2, um, like I said, 1.8 meters, how much span you need to safely bend this. And this is, again, for temporary, that's why uh, all this pressure and te temperatures or delta T is all zero. So I just want to worth mentioning that this tool, even though it was based on 1117, was for different purposes, but you can use it for ro your road roping design. Okay, that's um, everything about this great tool. I uh, hope you like it. Um, we uh, we are constantly improving our all our existing tools. In the next few months, we're gonna upload more tools. At the same time, we will continue making these tutorial uh, videos. For everyone, uh, in, in case you guys have questions, you want to know how to use it, maybe there's some, some places not so clear to you. So if you have questions, uh, feel, free to, feel free to visit our website, uh, www.pipeengine.com. And uh, we do have a section in the contact us page that you can leave as a message. You can send us emails, um, whatever the comments or suggestion you have. Uh, we look forward to hearing from all of you. Uh, hopefully we can, you, you like this video um, and see you next time. Thank you.